God that you came and you died for us so that we may be with you forever thank you Jesus give me wisdom what to say Lord let your words speak through my, be spoken through my mouth in Jesus name I pray Amen okay the title is the wisdom of Jesus and many people don't really think about it but Jesus actually he didn't just come to kill people. He used wisdom in everything he did. When he died, even when he died, they kept on accusing him. Even in, let's say, Matthew 27, 12, 14. And when he was accused of the chief and priest, and elders, he entered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him, To never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Why would a governor marvel at a man who said nothing? Because he knew that anything he said, the Pharisees would call him a liar. He's not speaking the truth. And saying nothing proved that he was innocent. That is wisdom in itself, is saying nothing. Sometimes we want to say something. Sometimes we want to accuse someone or say, hey, I, that's not my fault. It's not, it, it's their fault. Can't you see it? They, they are the ones that fought here. They are the ones that did it. But the thing is, there's wisdom in saying nothing. Because when we say nothing, it proves that, hey, the guy, you want to believe him, believe him. But you know what? I'm not saying anything because I didn't do it. Just keeping a calm demeanor will sometimes cause people to think, wait a minute, this guy that's accusing him over and over and over again, yet this guy is saying nothing. And because he's saying nothing, people would question, okay, what side is the right side here? This guy is accusing him or the guy who's saying nothing? And so many times people are wondering why people aren't getting killed. That's another thing. Why is he getting killed right away? Well, here's an answer. Luke 17, 11, 18. Luke. 11 through 18. Uh, Luke 17, 11 through 18. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Shermai and Galilee. And it came to enter a certain village, and him ten men that were lepers, which stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, mercy, have mercy on us. And he saw them, and he said unto them, Go, sow yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Where are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that, uh, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, and thy faith hath made thee whole. Why would Jesus not heal him on the spot? Because he was sending them for a reason. He wanted to test their hearts. They got healed. They obeyed. But only one, truly in his heart, was thankful. Thankful that God took time and healed him from an incurable disease that was killing him every day, every second. Leprosy is not something that's, oh, I'll die slowly. No, it slowly takes your hands off, your nose off. This guy, truly in heart, was thankful. He was truly giving... It, he, when he returned, he proved how grateful he was to God. And he was pro probably more, probably anyone in close, probably in heaven, if any of them made it in heaven, that, pro that one probably made it to heaven because he truly was thankful for God. How many times are we thankful for anything we get? And sometimes when we don't get held in the spot or get what we ask for in the spot, we're like, well, God doesn't hear my prayer. Right there, uh, for one, your heart's being tested. 
and you're, if you just prove that out of your own heart that you only want God use him as a tool you're not really thankful you just want to take something from God and then go on your merry way so maybe it's like oh you didn't have my faith well maybe God's testing your heart are you really really asking God just to get what you want or are you really asking God because you really need it and you're really thankful of God if he answers your prayer now there's many things that I mean, God, uh, Jesus did on earth they, they literally approached him about many matters trying to deceive him one such matter was in uh, John 8. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again unto the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this room was taken on adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded that we should be, that such should be stoned. But what thou sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have accused him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, rolled on the ground, as he thought he heard them not. And when they continued to ask him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a first stone at her. And again he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own consciences, went out one by one, beginning in the, at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the women standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, thou art thy own accusers. Hath no man condemned thee? Said Jesus, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone was to approach you and say, Hey, this person did this, and by law this person should be killed or stoned, what would you do? Well, would you, you'd probably be confused. I mean, you know they're trying to uh, tempt you and they're trick you. But Jesus did the smartest thing of all. He s sat down. And I bet he was praying. He said, Father, what would you have me to do? He, and he listened. And he said, in his heart, he knew what to say. He without sin cast the first stone. Now, come on. How many of us would have said that? He without sin cast the first stone. Every one of us has sinned. So Jesus, when he said that, he knew that they could not cast that stone. Now, why... Are we trying to cast stones at other people when we have sin of our own in our own heart? We, we think we're wise. We have wisdom when we cast that stone, but we don't understand we're hurting that person when we're casting those stones because they know that we are not perfect either, so, and you're casting that stone, and they're thinking, why am I being ca stone cast, being cast at me? And it, it doesn't even have to be physical. It could be just their words. So when you say, you see, you're no good. You, you, look, you messed up big time, Buster. And they was like, whoa, what about you? You, you, you? you hit a person and you cause the old lady to stumble or fall and n you're casting a stone at me through your mouth because I accidentally picked something up from the store and forgot to pay for it? And now I'm, I'm being accused of thievery, but you know for a fact I would never steal something, but here you are accusing me of being a thief and no good person. Why are you throwing a stone at me? We think that we can just be mean to people and not even think about consequences. And we think we can just throw stones and it won't come back at us. For all you know, if you cast that stone, that stone could be thrown back at you even ten times greater because you did something more worse than they did. And if you, and if you did do nothing, there's in time in the future. Human's tenacity is to mess up. And when you mess up, what you did will come back at you. We cannot, cannot keep on throwing stones at people. Just when people come in even and they're, they're, they're smoking or they're drinking, if they come in, that's because God's pulling them in. And yet as people, we come in and condemn them. Jesus is using wisdom by drawing them in 
through their conscience, through their heart, and then we come in through our mouth and give into foolishness and say, oh, look at that person. He's a no-good slum bag. Why? Why? Jesus did not come to this earth to give us a reason to act holy. He came here to die, for we can be in heaven with him for eternity. We're supposed to love one another, even love our enemies, love our neighbors. If we really have wisdom, we, we go to the Word and realize how Jesus would want us to act. Jesus knew on how to act, when to act, and what to do, and He used wisdom in everything He did, in everything He did. How many of us can say, oh, I didn't mess up. I didn't use foolishness today. I used wisdom. Everything I said was wisdom. <laughs> Jesus could probably be the only one in this world that I did only use wisdom because he of J- John 5:30. This proves what he what did was only used wisdom. I can of myself own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, as my own judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of my Father which has sent me. God knows everything. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows every action that's going to happen. Sometimes there's, God will tell you to do something that seems so stupid, so stupid, yet when you do it, a person gets saved or healed, or freed, or, or delivered from a thought of suicide because they were asking God, God, if you really cared for me, have this person do this. Now, it's something like really stupid. And that because you listened to God, that person got, not only got freed from the idea of committing suicide, but gave his heart to God because he knew God was listening to him. Wisdom is listening to God, or being obedient, And sometimes doing things we do not want to do. Wisdom gives us an edge, not only on life, but on Satan. Because if you have wisdom, Satan can't deceive you. He can't trick you. He can't make you fall or trip. Because it's like wisdom wisdom brings back a memory verse. Oh, wait a minute. God says, do not do that. Do not not steal that. Do not do that. I was like, wait a minute. Satan. That's not right. You, you, that's not. That's not what the Bible says. With, and then when you, it says this and this and this, and that's wisdom speaking out of your mouth. People don't think. Well, my words have nothing, me, no meaning. It doesn't have an effect. I mean, that's not true. So many times our words can have an effect on people, and one of them. One of the effects, let's see if you can find it here. Uh, here, Proverbs 1, 14, 1. Here's one. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hand. Wisdom can help you build your family up or in Foolishness, tear it down. Our actions and words affect our family. If you say to someone in your family, you're not important, or something means nothing, you, or you mean, or something mean, that is tearing them down. Wisdom will not join in tearing someone down. That is foolishness. In history, there have been stories about women encouraging their son, one such son that was blessed by their mother, because of her wisdom was Thomas Edison. If it was not for her, not giving up on her son's life w- would have been different. He, his life would have been different, and he would have probably not invented anything. It was wasn't just Thomas Edison we should thank for the blessings he invented for us. His mother had a big hand as well. If it was not for her wisdom in raising her own son, we would not have tapes 
maybe even CDs or DVDs, but he invented the first thing that could record its name, which called the cylinder pornograph. Also, the, how much has his invention called light bulb affected us today? So I'm just we were thinking, well, we have these inventions, but you don't understand where these inventions came from. And it was because not just from Thomas Edison, it was from his mother. His mother poured his life into her son. He would not give up. When the world gave up and everything on Thomas Edison, his mother would not give up. And because of that, we have what we have today, light bulb and many other things. You can look it up, what he invented. Jesus knows everything because he listens to his father. Do we listen to God? Do we take time and say, God, what should I say? how should I handle this situation? How should I act? Or what should I say? Or what should I be doing to right now? Should I be really just sitting down and thinking about these things? I mean, sometimes we met him on things that will affect our voice, what we'll say. We're thinking about, oh, that movie that just killed someone and that because that person deserved it. And then someone does something mean to us. And because we're meditating upon that, it's like we're, our first outcome is winning. That guy did something wrong, and this is how he handled it. And without even thinking, we act the same way. It's like, how dare you? You, 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 you did something wrong. Um, you, how dare you treat me this way? When Jesus was dying on the cross, when they were accusing him, he said nothing. He said nothing. Because he knew that was the smartest thing he could do. If we truly want wisdom, we can ask God. He said he'll give us, uh, ask and he should freely give it to us. Jesus cared for us. He died for us. And he did what God, he said out of his mouth, I only do what I do my father does or tells me to do. Wisdom is something that we take time and think about or listen to what God tells us to do. We know what whatever Jesus truly tells us to do will have, have a good outcome. It might not seem at the time. Sometimes the people who might hate us or spit at us like they did at Jesus. But those people, some of them actually would have thought back, well, what, Jesus, he didn't say anything. He didn't, he didn't hate he didn't speak b and badly about him. How do you think I even heard him say, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do? How many, how many of those people, because he did that, gave their heart to God in the future? Sometimes we don't even think what our actions are going to do in the future. We're thinking of the here and now. Wisdom thinks, okay, here's the future, and this is the outcome. Right now, they're going to hate me and try to kill me. But in the future, they'll give the heart to God. And they'll say, Lord, your will be done. And they do it. They do the right thing. We need Jesus. We need God. We need his wisdom and how to handle everything we do. We, sometimes we question so many things. Sometimes we're thinking, why or when? Or what? When we can just go to God and say, God, I need help in handling this situation. That in itself is wisdom as well. If you really want everything to turn around your life, start using wisdom. And thank God for everything you have. And that's and. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, we're... <laughs> A lot of things he said just hit between the eyes. So quick to judge, so quick to condemn, so quick to attack others and not to pull the beam out of our own eyes. 
so quick to throw rocks. I, I think I probably hit Stephen a couple times in the head with spiritual rocks. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's merciful to us? Aren't you glad that you can say, Lord, forgive me for being stupid, for not using wisdom, for not looking at the life of Christ, for not for opening up my big mouth and sticking my foot in it, for picking up rocks and throwing them at others. Lord, give us wisdom. You've already given us wisdom. You've given us your son, Jesus. Now, Lord, we give ourselves to you. We give ourselves to you. Could you come and sing that baby doll, Stephanie? Come and let's sing that song, I Give Myself Away, so you can use me. You got to give yourself to wisdom for wisdom to possess you. God will show you what to do. If you just ask him, God, what should I do? What should I do? What should I say? How should I act? And then you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just don't. Just don't say, God, what should I do, and then ignore the book of wisdom. <laughs> How many of you know we got a book of wisdom? It's called the Bible, especially the New Testament. We have a book of wisdom. And you know what he was sharing about our families. We need to use wisdom when it comes to our families, when it comes to our children, when it comes to our wives. We're going to sing this song, I Give Myself Away. Give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I belong to you, Jesus. I give myself
God to touch your body, to heal you, to deliver you, to move upon your life. We have a green line up here. We would like you to come and get prayed for right now. And Stephen wants you to come and pray with me. If you need God to touch your life, if you want to give yourself away to Christ, you just need Christ to touch you, come right now. Let's pray for you right now. Let's come and let's pray for you right now. Thank you. 